and Philippine Uc, private sector dialogue officer at Surfrider Foundation Europe. And Marina Rashline, representative of GDI. So GDI, you all know what GDI means. It means Joint European Disruptive Initiative. <laughs> so, <laughs> well. We are happy to be here. <laughs> yes. Right, so thanks a lot for joining me. Um, so I'll start maybe with a, you know, a question for, for Laurence. Um, uh, so you are with BNP Paribas, a global bank, and my, one might wonder, you know, why is BNP Paribas interested in the ocean? Uh, and what is the role that you see for you know, BNP uh, in, uh, in addressing the ocean challenges that Ambassador Peter Thompson has set for us? Okay, thank you for your question, but uh, I can uh, hear the unasked question, which is, uh, how come a bank should be involved in protecting the ocean? Is it about uh, communication or corporate philanthropy? No, for us, it's about doing real good positive impact business with our clients in the ocean-related activities. So prior to taking those commitments to protect the ocean, we had an in-depth dialogue with different stakeholders because we don't have the expertise, we are only bankers. So we worked with our clients, we worked with NGOs, with think tanks, with scientists, in order to better understand the situation and to take into account all the different issues. So at the end of the day, what we decided is first, to finance the current situation in the best responsible way. We finance a lot of ocean-related activities, such as the shipping industry, fisheries, aquaculture, deep sea infrastructures, but also agriculture, mining industry, which have a direct impact on, on the ocean, which could, can be a negative impact. So we want our clients to adopt the best practices. And second, because it's all about change, it's all about transition, transforming the way things are being done, uh, we want to support our clients in their transition journey. And for this, two things will be needed. First, investment, because it will cost a lot of money. If you take, for example, the shipping industry, they will have to reduce dramatically their CO2 emissions of 50% before 2050. And also innovation is required. So that's why we work also with incubators, startups, accelerators, and we also support scientists and the fundamental research. So in a nutshell, that's what we want to do to protect the ocean. Okay, now I understand much better the connection. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and so Philippines, so you, were, uh, you are with um, Surfrider Europe, and um, so I guess it's a civil NGO or? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, can you tell me? So, what is Surfrider Europe, and how do you, you know, play your bit in the ocean, managing the ocean? Yes. Uh, first of all, I would like to to share the apologies of uh, Auntie Diasi Torres, who is a spokeswoman of uh, Surfrider Foundation Europe, who couldn't make it for today. But I will do my best to pre to replace her. Um, so, Surfrider Foundation Europe is uh, an NGO uh, which is dedicated to the protection of the ocean. It was uh, founded in the 90s uh, by uh, European surfers who wanted to protect their beaches uh, from the pollution. And now uh, we're in 2020 celebrating our 30th anniversary and we're very proud of, the, of, the, of all the road we did. Um, because now uh, we have with us a very strong community of uh, surfers, of course, but also uh, of every, all the people who really love the ocean and want to bring energy and want to bring the creativity for its protection. So Surf Rider works on three major topics. The first one is uh, marine litter. This is our historical activity. Uh, 
we, we gained a great expertise uh, on the topic um, through awareness raising, through um, uh, scientific monitoring of those pollutions. Uh, and we, 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 we were able, with all these aspects, to gain some victories. The second topic is water quality and health. And we will have, uh, in 2020, uh, quite a momentum about this topic. Uh, with the revision of the EU directive uh, on, the, um, on the bathing water quality. <laughs> uh, so this is our second topic. The objective uh, is to get more ambition from the people involved in it. And the last topic is climate change. Because we more and more understand how climate change and ocean interact together. And they are key to protect together. So our objective here is to make sure these people understand this connection and make appropriate action to preserve both. And of course, we, we, we do projects that uh, involve all the street topics, for example, the shipping, uh, because, well, with um, marine litter, uh, we see like loss of containers, uh, bad, um, bad uh, waste management on board, etc. We, we have issues with water quality. Uh, with the spills, and of course we have uh, climate change issues with uh, the use of fuel. So we want to make sure uh, to find solution on all those topics. Okay, amazing. Thanks a lot, Philippine. And so, um, turning to Marie now. Um, so, uh, you know, so you, we think we know what Jedi is, but we, are, in fact, we don't really know. So you, I guess you were going to explain to us what it is and how you are leveraging, the, you know, creating this initiative to leverage collective intelligence to solve uh, planet, you know, the problems of planet, including the ocean. Please tell us a few words about it. Okay, so we are the new Jedi. I think you already know Luke Skywalker. <laughs> now it's a Jedi and you can join forces so everybody here can be involved in the new Jedi, which is a good news, right? So Jedi is a moonshot factory. Um, we work on a European level, and we all know that the world is not in a good shape, right? The world is burning, and while the US and China are investing a lot of money into R&D and innovation, Europe is slow, far too slow. And we believe at Jedi that innovation should be used to tackle the, the challenges that we are facing. And that's where Jedi can help, because Europe has no choice than to leapfrog and to find the next big things. So at Jedi, we launch challenges. We want to push the frontiers of innovation. We want to open the path to breakthrough innovation. So for the last couple of months, we have built the ecosystem, and uh, we have inspired the um, disruptive innovation strategy for France, Germany and Europe, and, and it's good, but that's not enough. It's time for action. So we're going to launch two challenges. The first one will be around list for that, and the other one will be around uh, the ocean protection. We want to tackle the marine pollution, and we want to find innovation that can identify the waste stream of microplastic. And for now, we have 3,500 Jedi champion and supporter. So we like collective intelligence. So we bring together student entrepreneurs, head of research lab, um, CEOs of big companies, uh, university. Uh, so everybody join forces to find solution now that, that can improve our lives. Yeah, thank you, Marina. So what I think is amazing about having, you know, uh, Laurence, Philippine, and Maria on stage is that we have people who, who are, you know, from finance and business, we have an NGO, we have, uh, you know, organization boosting research. And I think uh, we all understand we need, you know, coordinated action. We need to work together to make this happen. And, uh, and especially as consumers, we, uh, we sometimes feel we can do our bits, but we, we, we reach the limits. And so I'd like to talk about maybe if in, in something we could have a discussion, the three of us, the four of us, on one initiative that uh, a subwriter is spearheading. It's a, it's a label. 
And I see this as a way to connect consumers and, you know, and businesses and others. So um, maybe if you could say a few words about that and, and if we could all react to how this relates to our work, you know, where we are. Thank you. Uh, yes, absolutely. This uh, certification project is all about working together. Uh, so first of all, uh, Surfrider had this intuition that there was a need for a tool for customers to better understand how the shipping industry works on an environmental point of view. And because, well, this is kind of obvious. I think all of you in the room already wondered who did my shirt and where and with which material. But who really wonders uh, how was it transported? And yet, um, marine transport is about 80% uh, of the transportation of all the goods we consume. So this is a huge impact. So, well, actually, this is also comprehensible uh, that the consumer doesn't really have the tool to really understand all those impacts because what happens on the sea is very far from us. It's very mysterious in a certain way, and we don't really know what happens here. So, well, um, our objective is to, to, to close that gap. And um, so we, we decided, we, we thought, maybe the, the best tool for that was a certification, because the magic of a certification brings some information from the industrial in, in, into the market to the final consumer. So this is what we wanted yes. to do. But what will you certificate? Uh, what would you certify? Sorry? What will you certify? That's a good question. So the, 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 first, ba the first basis is to work with ship owners okay. to get some information on what happens on board. What is the process? How do they manage the waste? And how do they recycle their ships? So the idea is to work uh, oh. with them at the very beginning uh, to make a tool um, that can build trust. So this is a very important part of what we wanted to do. We wanted something transparent. Uh, we wanted something that, where we could find information online. We wanted something reliable with an audit to, to make sure there was trust at the heart of the process. We wanted it to be multi-stakeholders. We wanted to be able to invite uh, chargers, to invite ports, to invite uh, shipbuilders, not only ship owners, uh, NGOs, banks also. That's why we, we were really lucky to have, for example, uh, BNP. Um, in our advisory committee to give the opinion of a bank that finances the shipping industry. But to that, so I, I understand it's not just going to be about certifying that, you know, the ship is zero emissions or things like that. It's all going to be much more than this and include the fact that it's not going to release, you know, uh, gas or, or oil in the, in the, in the, uh, in the environment. And it's, uh, so that's a much broader approach of this, this certification. That's I understand. Yes, so okay. our objective was also to, to, to find a tool that would not only address CO2 emissions. I, I mean, this is a, an absolutely fundamental okay, topic we, we, to address. That would be part of it. Of, of course, okay, of okay. course, this is like a basis. But we want to, to make sure that there, there are also other topics that are involved. For example, the protection of the biodiversity, ship recycling, sulfur emissions, waste management on board, because those topics are not really... Uh, uh, existing in existing tool actually They're, they don't really have a room act okay. now but how will the consumer see it because uh, is it be like on the on the shirt that I buy it has been shipped you can see you can trace the fact find the fact that it was transported by a certified uh, uh, you know uh, certified by you know whatever your uh, surf rider uh, you know shipping level uh, good shipping level whatever the name was going to be <laughs> Um, actually, two years ago, we did a, we, we organized a, a vast uh, consultation called Voice for the Ocean in order to, to better understand how the European citizens saw the best priorities to protect the ocean. And guess what? The third result was about shipping. So, well, it confirmed that there was a mature interest of the uh, European citizens to get more information about these issues. They wanted to know more. So the idea is for the very beginning to work um, on the questionnaire, to, to do a questionnaire which is uh, adequate for EU ship owners. But the second part uh, will be to work with chargers, so with the brands actually that sell products, and to work with them to better understand how we should communicate the performance to the final consumer. Should it be an app? Should it be a logo unpack? Should it be something else? I don't know, information into the, the store? 
well, we have a lot of interrogation yeah. about okay. that. OK. But uh, we see the direction you're taking. And so now that we understand the tool and we see how it connects to the consumer, so the con consumer will be able to decide, I'd be interested to, le to learn how this connects to financiers like BNP. Are you going to finance only shipping, you know, shippers that maritime, you know, the maritime industry that complies with this the level are certified? Or what is the, the impact that this is going to be on the way you operate? Well, I think it's a, it's a very promising initiative because, uh, as uh, you mentioned, uh, uh, not finance in the shipping industry is not an option. It's critical for us. Each time you order a good on Amazon, it's transported by ship. So the idea is not to only select the most responsible players, is to have the whole industry moving forward, transforming itself and transitioning. So it's very important to have the ship owners, the ports, and everybody around the table in this discussion, because we want to achieve something which is feasible. So that's the idea, is to really have the whole industry transition. That's why we need financial support, and we can really have a lever of influence. OK, no, thanks for sharing that. Uh, and so uh, now I'd like to go back maybe to you know, the innovation angle. Uh, and you mentioned you know, the, the word moonshots. And so we have some examples of, of some moonshots. And I'd like to hear you know, uh, this discussion is about uh, how we achieve you know, a broader impact, a system level impact. And maybe if you can give an example of you know, uh, a moonshot that what you're trying to create for Ocean that has worked and why, you know, how this model can be relevant for uh, you know, uh, what we want to do. So at Jedi, we, we would like to create change thanks to two specificity, I guess. The first one is the methodology and the ecosystem. So the methodology is inspired by the DARPA. The DARPA is the American agency for the national security. So they initiate the path for breakthrough innovation, such as internet, SIRI, uh, GPS, and so forth. And they are very military concern where we are more uh, proud to be Europeans. So we are driven by European value and by a purpose-driven approach. And we join forces. We, we would like to gather uh, all the stakeholders, uh, research, university, because we believe in collective intelligence. And we express that in the second thing, the second specificity, which is the governance. The governance is not top down. I think we are done, I mean, this is not manageable at the 21st century. So our governance is co managed by uh, the tech and the innovation ecosystem in Europe. So that means that uh, a student, an entrepreneur, a CEO, of big of large company, they are the same level. Um, and to give an example, yeah, we we would like to find solution uh, regarding the oceans. And if we find solution to detect the microplastic, I think we, it will be like a big big breakthrough. So the methodology will help, the governance will help, and then and then the tools. And to come back to the subject of the, the ocean governance, I think it is complex because you can, the, the ocean governance can be carried out at different levels. So you have local, national, international, but there is a need for link, the, a link between all those organizations because those organizations today, they don't have the power and the authority and the instrument to and for the, for the enforcement of the law, for the compliance. And it is complex because the ocean, this is a common good. They don't belong to anyone, um, so they belong to everybody. And two thirds of um, the seas and the ocean are open waters. That means that when you are on the high seas, you are free and you can do pretty much what you like. And the fact that it is a common, it is a great threat and a great opportunity at the same time. Why? A great threat because um, everybody used the ocean resources as shared resources, but nobody takes responsibility in caring for them. And a great opportunity. Why? Because we have the chance to try something new. We can try a universal governance, for example. 
I'm very inspired by the space industry. I'm passionate about the ocean and space, and I, f and I found out that they are related. Space is also a common good. So um, I think we should be inspired by the work that the space organizations are doing, because it facilitates the international cooperation. And for that, I do believe in three power. The first one is exploration. As Captain Kirk said in Star Trek, uh, the exploration is uh, we go where we have never been before with audacity. And today, only 5% of the ocean have been explored in a systemic way. What does it mean? It means that we better know the surface of Mars and the moon than the bottom of our oceans. So how can we possibly know what, how to act in their best interest if we don't know how they work? The second power is the collective intelligence. We need to gather and join forces and to give people the tools and the methodology to go faster and to prototype, to prototype, to prototype solution, test and learn. And the third power is the power of action. We all have a responsibility here. We need to take our power back because if we wait everything from the state and the institution, they are not agile. So we all have a responsibility and a role to play in protecting the ocean. So I invite you to take your power back and to act and have a responsible behavior. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mariner, for the invitation. So now you have to uh, respond to the invitation.